Mandla Magagula, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. We're very excited to have you joining us at DevConf, DevConf on the 5th and the 7th of April this year. No pressure at all, um, but I'm not sure if you've heard the tickets are nearly sold out. Uh, Joburg, we've got about 50 left. In Cape Town, we are completely sold out. No pressure, but does that make you nervous at all? <laughs> A little, a little nervous, but I think the main thing is it's excitement, you know, so I, I receive this as testament that the local development community, the, the local software people actually excited to get back together again. I think we've had a tough two years where it was almost impossible to just walk outside um, and just meet other people, like-minded people. So to me, it's a, it's a, it's a great testament to the, the health of the local development community. So I'm very excited to connect with um, friends and make new ones and uh, almost share ideas and see where, where everyone's at at this point. Well, we're very excited. Um, without giving away any of the nuggets of wisdom that you'll be sharing with us on the days, yeah. um, give us a little bit of an over talk. You've got a, a little bit of an overview. You've got a very contentious topic. Um, the great myths of software engineering teams. So I'm interested to hear what a little bit more about this um, topic. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this talk. Um, so I've been in software development for almost 20 years now. So, um, and there's a few observations that I've made over time in terms of how teams work, you know, how, because I've worked with many different teams to build many different products and I have seen what has worked. And I want to share some of that experience and my observation over time. Um, because I mean, case in point, what I've realized is that actually the most important times in a software developer's life is when you join a team and when you leave the team. Those are the most critical points. And to me, I took advantage of those points because um, that determined in terms of if I'm still joining, um, what is the, the nature of the team? So I'd observe, I would see very early on the hierarchies in the team. I would see very early on whether the team is, uh, is uh, centric to the client or are they just um, centered around their internal processes? I will see that very clearly. And then on the final day, it's almost like a, a reflection, you know? So I wanna combine all of that with this talk. And then, and then share what I think is not going so well um, with engineering teams and um, what I think, what I feel could be improved because that's definitely a long way to go uh, in terms of us getting to a point where as uh, software people, we, 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 we move the needle a little bit and we make a difference. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. So to move away from DevCon for a second, you've walked a really fascinating journey over the years. Give us a little bit of an overview of your background. Yeah, thanks. Um, so to say, to say the least, it was fascinating. Um, so I grew up on the farm um, and my family on the farm. So we basically, I'm a typical South African story of poverty and then you almost like make your way through university. And then my professional journey started the Reserve Bank um, about, I think now about 16 years ago, where I joined a team again, a software engineering team that was primarily focusing on building systems for HR, HR systems. And our client was the HR department at the Reserve Bank. And most of my learnings actually about, about teams, about how teams need to, to function started there. Because very early on, I was very convicted about who uses the software that you build, right? Who are the people that um, are benefiting or are feeling pain if certain things are not delivered? So you'd see me around walking um, to the clients and, and uh, talking to clients about um, the experience. And at the time, obviously, it was a point of, from a position of purely being naive, not fully understanding. But in that, curi in that curious mind, in that, those conversations, I think something developed because um, I remember built a few systems there and, and a few systems that won awards that I actually started, you know, from that point of having conversations with the clients. 
And then, um, like over time, I, I left the Reserve Bank. I went to join um, like a telecommunications company, um, and I stayed there. I think I stayed there the longest. Um, and again, um, I could see things that were working, and I was always fascinated about, you know, the nature of teams, the way we structure teams, the way, um, you know, teams deliver the product, and and you know, and I saw this. This was a golden thread about these engineering teams that the effective ones stood out and the makeup of that team also stood out to me, you know, and uh, and then over time, then I left, I went to join banking, you know, commercial bank, and I stayed in banking for for another five or so years um, until, which I'm still going to talk about, until a few years where we started, we founded a coding, uh, a coding academy for young people in, in South Africa, which is the coding crowd. And then, and then currently I've been fascinated about um, the, the world of decentralized systems, you know, DeFi and the, and the potential impact to the world. Hence, I, I took up a role as a chief digital officer for a, a Dubai-based um, uh, DeFi company, uh, which I'm, I'm excited every day to work with the, globally decentralized team and I'm learning again about the structure of the team and then and, and how to make it effective and I, I'm learning on a continuous basis. That's amazing. So from from rural Limpopo to Dubai, it's quite a journey. Yeah, so not necessarily rural Limpopo. I didn't grow up in Limpopo, I grew up in Gumalanga. However, okay. Yeah, but it's not too far. It's like just semantics. So ah, okay. My geography yeah. skills, hey? So much that high school has to has to, um, yes. has to yeah. yeah. So Amanda, part of that you you touched very briefly um on the coding ground, and that's been a really interesting part of your journey. Can you tell us a little bit more about that organization? No, so the coding ground was founded by myself and a few of my very good friends, Theodore Bonin and Jason Sunny. Um, just to give a quick backstory before the coding round was started. Uh, prior to that, Theo and myself had spent weekends, every weekend without fail, teaching young people in Deep Slurred how to code Python. Uh, we take kids from the as early as eight years old. I mean, our youngest student was eight years old, and our oldest student was uh, like over 30 years old. So we just, it was like, I don't want to say it was teaching kids, it was teaching everyone. Mm -hmm. how to teach people. And um, yeah, so, and, and, and we, we did that for a few years until one day Theo came to me and said, Wanda, this could be, we could have a bigger impact. You know, let's formalize this, let's found, let's have some sort of a company where we can bring these young people that typically cannot make it into university, and give them this as an option. And I'm glad I said yes. You know, it was challenging at first. And um, so we, we, but we, we pushed through. And um, yeah, so over the years, we've taken a few people, young people that are currently working for some of the fintechs. And I hope some of my students are here today. Um, and, you know, so we, we're proud with what we've done. It's not as big as we would have hoped to be but the impact has been visible. That's great. And our Johannesburg attendees for DevConf can actually um, go and visit the Coding Grounds offices, which are at the River Sands Park as well. Correct. Yeah, that, that is correct. So we are at the River Sands Incubation Hub. So it's actually one of the training rooms. So if you want to just hop up, stop by, say hello to the students and see how we do things at the coding ground. I mean, you're more than welcome. Chat to me about it. And I think that everyone should be doing this. Um, whenever you have a chance, you know, if you can, um, wherever you are, like expand, reach out to a young person, you know, let's build longer tables than high walls. That is just the perfect place to end this. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And I really look forward to meeting you on the day. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Um, the feeling is mutual. <laughs>